Hi, I'm Bill Davis, Vice President of Safety Services with the FAA's Air Traffic Organization. And I'm standing near some of the busiest airport intersections in the world, at Chicago's O'Hare International Airport. Here, and at airports throughout the world, all it takes is a minor distraction to be involved in a runway incursion. George Lebanon, 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 April 1st, 1999. In the early morning hours, Air China 9018 deviates from its assigned taxi route and enters runway 14, where Korean Air Flight 36 has just been cleared for takeoff. February 1st, 1991. U.S. Air Flight 1443, a Boeing 737, was on final approach to LAX. SkyWest Metro 5569 was cleared to position and hold on the same runway, 24 left. The 27th of March, 1977, Tenerife in the Canary Islands. A KLM 747 begins its takeoff roll, while unbeknownst to its crew, a Pan Am 747 has begun to taxi, utilizing the same runway, 12, as a taxiway. Getting to and from a runway has become increasingly complex. Situations like these can occur anywhere to any pilot at any time. Runway incursions occur almost daily, and over 40% of these incursions involve commercial aircraft. Reducing this incursion risk is one of the FAA's highest priorities. Narita, Japan. United 852, a Boeing 747-400 bound for San Francisco, begins to push back with 324 customers on board. Anchorage, Alaska, Northern Air Cargo, call sign Yukon 50, begins to taxi from the ramp. This DC-6 will travel to the remote western airport of Unalakleet to pick up a load of Alaskan king crab. Van Nuys, California. November 384 Charlie Foxtrot, a Learjet, has been chartered for a flight to San Francisco International Airport. Each of these flight crews are entering the most dangerous phase of their flight. The number and proximity of aircraft operating at an airport make taxi operations one of the most potentially dangerous parts of commercial aviation. Communication, planning, and flight deck procedures developed by the FAA significantly reduce the number of incursions during the ground movement phase of aircraft operations. Exactly what is a runway incursion? The FAA and ICAO have similar definitions. The FAA defines an incursion as any occurrence at an airport involving an aircraft, vehicle, person, or object on the ground that creates a collision hazard or results in a loss of required separation with an aircraft taking off, intending to take off, landing or intending to land. ICAO defines an incursion as an occurrence at an aerodrome involving the incorrect presence of an aircraft, vehicle or person on the protected area of a surface designated for the landing and takeoff of aircraft. These two definitions describe the same situation. An aircraft is where it should not be. There are three different types of runway incursions. 
An operational error occurs when an element of air traffic control provides direction that results in less than the required minimum separation between two or more aircraft, or between aircraft and obstacles such as vehicles, equipment, and personnel on runways. An operational error also occurs when an aircraft lands or departs on a runway closed to aircraft. A pilot deviation occurs when a pilot violates any federal aviation regulation. For example, a pilot failing to obey air traffic control instructions related to crossing an active runway while following the authorized route. A vehicle or pedestrian deviation occurs when a pedestrian, vehicle, or other object interferes with aircraft operations without authorization from air traffic control. This type of runway incursion includes the taxiing of aircraft for maintenance or gate repositioning. There has been a steady increase in the number of runway incursions at airports throughout the world. This increase can be linked to a number of factors. Increased traffic, poor crew resource management, increased flight deck workload, low visibility at night or during poor weather conditions, airport familiarity, complex airport layouts, and flight deck distractions. Oftentimes, runway incursions are the result of a series of these events taking place simultaneously. Over half of the reported runway incursions are due to pilot deviation. This program will look at operating practices and procedures that can reduce the risk of runway incursions by pilot deviation. Yukon 5-0 has just received taxi instructions, which will take them from a hangar located on the west side of the Anchorage International Airport to a position just short of runway 6 left. With intersecting runways and taxiways, communication must be clear and exact. Anchorage ground, Yukon 50, ready for taxi with whiskey. Good communication with air traffic control is essential to avoid runway incursions. One third of all incidents are attributed to communication errors between the pilot and air traffic control. There are several communication procedures that can reduce or eliminate incursions during ground operations. Hey, Branch, talk with 1690, you headed for Delta, uh, Charlie Port. Start with 70, 600, and I continue on Delta, Delta 1 Bravo, over the Bravo Bridge, and then Papa Hotel. Chief Delta, Delta 1 Bravo Bridge, Papa Hotel, 1690. During initial contact with the tower or ground control, it is important for flight crews to clearly state the location of the aircraft using only standard ATC phraseology. Aircraft location should be restated following all radio frequency changes to a different tower or ground control frequency. All clearances and instructions should be read back to the controller when entering a specific runway, holding short of a runway, or when directed to position and hold. Was that for us? Why don't you request progressive taxi instructions? If there is any question about the instruction or clearance received, the flight crew should ask for clarification. If the crew is still unsure after receiving additional information, the crew should request progressive taxi instructions from the tower. San Francisco ground, November 3 for Charlie Foxtrot. Request progressive taxi. Communication is especially important when speaking to controllers in different countries. Uh, Delhi radar, Victor Lima, Sierra, position Alpha Lima this time. Victor Lima, Sierra, Roger. The difference between U.S. and ICAO phraseology is sometimes significant. For instance, in the U.S., taxi into position and hold is dramatically different from the ICAO taxi to holding position or taxi to holding point. Hey, Margo, would you announce that we're uh, taxiing up the hold short of runway 32 at Unicleet? Sure. Unicleet traffic Yukon 50 is taxiing for departure runway 32. We'll hold short. Is there anybody in the area? It is important for pilots to monitor tower frequency, or when the tower is closed, the common traffic advisory frequency, CTAF. Any doubt about instructions received should be verified with the controller. United 852, bound for San Francisco, has traveled from its gate to the runway threshold. The flight crew of this wide-body aircraft has been given permission to position and hold 
on the longer and often preferred runway 34 left. Position and hold or line up and wait instructions help traffic move more efficiently at airports. If a takeoff clearance is not received within a reasonable time after instructions to position and hold, ATC should be contacted. Pilots should consider the length of time that they have been holding in position whenever they have not been advised of any expected delay. During this phase of ground operations, the use of traffic displays, or TCAS, may enhance the situational awareness of a flight crew by allowing them to look for aircraft on approach behind them. Rob, I see traffic on a TCAS uh, behind us. All right, I see it. Uh, call tower immediately and advise them. Flight crews should verify instructions if their TCAS display indicates an approaching aircraft. When given last-minute turn-off or land-and-hold short instructions, flight crews should immediately respond unable if there is any doubt about the ability to comply. Taxi instructions should not be acknowledged until the aircraft has completed its rollout and has reached taxi speed. Finally, it is important to minimize flight crew distractions during communication by maintaining a sterile flight deck during arrival and departure operations. There are several additional resources that you can view related to flight deck communication and phraseology. This completes the chapter on communication procedures. November 384 Charlie Foxtrot has been chartered for a flight between Van Nuys, California and San Francisco. While the passenger relaxes prior to taxiing, the crew begins one of the most important phases of preparation for this flight. In addition to good communication, there are a number of standard planning and coordination procedures that should be part of pre-departure and arrival briefings. These procedures begin prior to boarding the aircraft. During the initial briefing, flight crews should take time to discuss crew member experience related to each airport. My last flight on the 7-4, I flew flight from uh, Chicago to Frankfurt and over to London, same trip we're doing this time. Current airport knowledge is a key factor in avoiding runway incursions. Also during the initial briefing, the importance of maintaining a sterile flight deck during departure and arrival should be conveyed to all crew members. Pre-departure and pre-arrival briefings should be conducted approximately 10 minutes prior to pushback or descent. These briefings should include details of the departure or arrival airport. Here are some important procedures that should be included in a briefing. Using an airport diagram chart, the flight crew should identify any known airport runway incursion hotspots and discuss any recent changes to the airport, such as closed pavement, or areas where construction is underway. Locations that are noted with weight, wingspan, or other size-related limitations should also be identified. Flight crews should review the latest NOTAMs and ATIS information, as well as identify any weather or airport conditions, including construction, that might affect taxi operations. A discussion of ground movement practices and procedures allows the crew to coordinate all communication during ground operations, such as the timing of checklist and company communication. Planning these events minimizes distractions during the taxi phase of operations. Heads down procedures should also be discussed during the pre-departure and pre-arrival briefings. Only one flight crew member should perform heads down tasks, such as programming the FMS or calculating takeoff data while the aircraft is moving. 1519, If there are complex taxi instructions, heads down activities should be restricted to straight taxiways without complex intersections or when the aircraft is stopped. By studying an airport diagram, the crew can enhance situational awareness during the pre-flight and pre-arrival briefings. This diagram should be readily available for reference during all phases of taxi operations. Anticipated taxi routes can be discussed and checked against the airport diagram. While this is an essential part of pre-taxi briefing and planning, 
Flight crews need to follow the clearance or instructions that are actually received and avoid fixation on pre-planned taxi routes. During the briefing, runway occupancy and crossing clearance procedures should be discussed. Okay, uh, we are clear to cross nine left, correct? Yes, we are clear to cross nine left. All right, it's clear. Prior to crossing any runway, both pilots should scan the full length of the runway for aircraft on final approach or landing rollout. Each pilot should verbally confirm the scan results. Yeah, we're clear on the left. If the aircraft is equipped with TCAS, the flight crew should discuss the TCAS settings to be used when held on or between runways. A review of exterior light utilization and verification of any land and hold short requirements at the destination airport are important elements of a proper briefing. These briefings should also include a discussion of any regional language or terminology differences that might impede proper communications with ATC. A star chart and airport diagram review during arrival briefings improves the crew awareness of runway length, lighting, and turnoff direction for an anticipated runway. Let's see, runway 9 right is 10,506 feet long. During low visibility conditions, the crew should also discuss the method of reporting clear of runway. This completes the chapter on departure and arrival briefings. Safe flight begins and ends when the airplane is parked at the gate. While the aircraft is taxiing, there are numerous procedures and practices that will help prevent runway incursions. At many airports, taxi instructions can be very complex. During complex ground operations, pilots are extremely busy. Misunderstanding or forgetting any part of taxi instructions can lead to runway incursions. By writing down the taxi instructions, a crew can eliminate this danger. It can also be used for readback to ATC and crew member coordination. Once taxi instructions have been received, both pilots must understand and verbally agree on all instructions. We'll make the right turn November, Quebec, await further instructions. If there is a misunderstanding or discrepancy, it should be resolved with ATC prior to taxiing. Why don't we request uh, progressive taxi instructions? Frankfurt Ground American 4-2, requesting progressive taxi instructions, please. When a pilot becomes unsure of the aircraft location while taxiing, progressive taxi instructions should be requested. When anticipating a clearance to cross or taxi onto an active runway, both pilots should monitor the tower frequency. When following taxi instructions, all turns should be verbally confirmed by both pilots. It looks like November is the next 90 degree left turn. Okay, got it. All flight deck crew members must concur that a runway occupancy clearance has been received. Any runway occupancy clearance must be acknowledged. David, final. All oh, clear, yes. Before moving on to an active runway, both pilots need to scan the entire runway, including both approaches and verbally confirm that the runway is clear. This also applies to crossing active runways. If you are held on a runway for a period of time that is more than reasonable considering the current conditions, contact the tower and confirm the clearance to hold on the runway. Low visibility creates additional hazards to aircraft while taxiing. While modern aircraft are equipped with automation that can land under low visibility conditions, there is no such corresponding technology to aid pilots while taxiing. When visibility is low, all heads down duties should be completed when the aircraft is stopped or while taxiing straight. Pay special attention when a runway is being used as a taxiway during low visibility situations. 
In all ground operations, it is important to utilize the appropriate lighting configuration for the aircraft. The more conspicuous the aircraft, the more likely you will be seen by other aircraft during taxi operations. This is even more important while taxiing at night or during adverse weather conditions. There are specific lighting configurations for each phase of ground operations. These configurations will be discussed within the next segment of this program. This concludes the chapter on taxi procedures. Yukon 50 has landed at the remote village of Unalakleet on the far western shore of Alaska. The cargo being delivered is part of a thin lifeline to this village. During this brief stop, the crew will unload essential cargo and supplies. Yukon 50 will also take on, among other things, a load of Alaskan king crab that only an hour ago arrived on the dock at Unalakleet. Unalakleet is a non-towered airport and requires additional procedures within the pre-arrival and pre-departure briefings. Extra vigilance is the key to safe taxi operations at non-towered airports. Some of these airports have part-time towers. In these situations, an attempt should be made to contact the tower to verify whether or not it is in operation. The automated surface observation system, or the automated weather observing system, should be monitored for additional information prior to taxiing or landing at a non-towered airport. Many pre-departure and pre-arrival procedures at non-towered airports are similar to that of towered airports. During pre-arrival and pre-departure, Discuss familiarity with the airport. Review NOTAMs. Use airport diagrams to plan the taxi route and identify hotspots. Enhance pilot situational awareness. Prior to entering or crossing any runway, both pilots scan the full length of the runway, including approach areas. Clear on the left. Clear on the right. And use recommended exterior lighting to make the aircraft more conspicuous. In a non-towered environment, pilots should monitor appropriate approach control frequencies, listen for inbound IFR traffic, and become familiar with the local traffic pattern. There are many additional sources that can be utilized, such as FSS, CTAF, and UNICOM. During taxi operations at a non-towered airport, all ground movement should be announced on CTAF or UNICOM. Once a pilot has announced the intention to take off from a non-towered airport, it is important that the lineup and hold phase be as brief as possible. Pilots should also state the name of the airport at the beginning and end of each radio transmission. This concludes the section on taxi procedures at non-towered airports. United 852 has completed its 10-hour journey across the Pacific and is now on final approach to San Francisco International Airport. Navigating a busy airport is even more difficult when weather is not favorable. Taxiing at night or during adverse weather conditions such as rain, snow or fog can make even simple taxi operations a challenge. Proper use of exterior aircraft lights make an aircraft more conspicuous and signal location and intent to other pilots. Various configurations can tell other pilots whether the aircraft is on a taxiway or on a runway. When on a runway, they can signal whether an aircraft is holding for takeoff clearance, crossing an active runway, or accelerating down the runway for takeoff. The configurations for exterior lights include engine running, taxiing, crossing a runway, entering a departure runway for takeoff, and takeoff. Let's look at these configurations in detail. Whenever the engines are running, it is important that the rotating beacon is illuminated. 
This beacon should be illuminated before engines are started. Prior to taxiing, the navigation lights should be illuminated. Before any aircraft movement, the taxi lights should be added to this configuration. When crossing any runway, all exterior lights should be illuminated. This includes the rotating beacon, navigation, strobe, taxi, and landing lights. When entering a departure runway, the rotating beacon, navigation, taxi, and strobe lights must be illuminated. Once a flight crew receives clearance for takeoff, the landing lights should be added to this configuration. During night operations, when taxiing into position on a runway, pilots should consider lining up about one meter off the center line to make it easier for other pilots to distinguish the aircraft lights from the in-pavement runway lights. Following these simple lighting procedures makes each aircraft more conspicuous and pilots will have an easier time maintaining their situational awareness on the ground. This completes the chapter on exterior aircraft lighting configurations. November 384 Charlie Foxtrot has also arrived at San Francisco International Airport. The pilot must now navigate a myriad of signs and runway markings while taxiing to the hangar. Airport taxiways and runways are extremely complex and busy environments. At night or during low visibility conditions, the signs and markings can be even more confusing to the pilot who is unprepared. It is extremely important for pilots to be familiar with the layout, markings, and signs of each airport. Here is a brief look at the signs and markings flight crews may encounter. A taxiway location sign indicates an aircraft's current location. It is oftentimes co-located with direction signs or a runway holding position sign. Runway holding position signs are located where a taxiway intersects a runway. These signs typically have two numbers. In this example, runway 32 is to the left and runway 14 to the right. This sign is located next to the holding position marking painted on the taxiway. Runway approach holding position sign. This runway approach holding position sign requires pilots to hold here when the controller specifically states to hold short of a runway approach. Taxiing past this sign could result in a runway incursion when the designated runway is active. It is always located next to yellow holding position markings on the pavement. ILS critical area holding position sign. When the ILS critical area is being protected, the pilot should stop so no part of the aircraft extends beyond the holding position marking. When approaching the holding position marking, a pilot should not cross the marking without ATC clearance. Controllers will issue instructions to hold short of the ILS critical area when weather conditions require the area to be protected. ILS critical area boundary sign. This sign is located on the runway side of the ILS critical area holding position sign and is next to the ILS holding position markings. It is seen by pilots leaving ILS critical areas. A no entry sign indicates an area prohibited to aircraft. This sign is found at the entrance to a one-way taxiway or at the intersection of a road intended for vehicles. An inbound destination sign uses an arrow to indicate the direction of a specific destination. Outbound destination signs indicate a common taxi route to runways with an arrow pointing out the direction of the taxi route. A dot separates two destinations. In this example, runways 27 and 33 are to the right. A direction sign for runway exit is located on a runway just prior to a taxiway intersection. This sign appears on the same side of the runway as the exit. Runway location signs identify the runway on which an aircraft is currently located. 
Taxiway ending markers are located on the far side of an intersection and indicate that a taxiway does not continue. A runway boundary sign faces the runway and is visible to pilots exiting the runway. It is located next to the yellow holding position markings painted on the taxiway pavement. Taxiing past this marking indicates an aircraft is clear of a runway. Understanding the meaning of all airport signs and markings greatly reduces the potential for pilot deviation incursions. United Flight 852, Yukon 50, and November 384 Charlie Foxtrot have each arrived safely at their destinations without incident. Yet over 300 times a year, aircraft are involved in dangerous and sometimes deadly runway incursions. Through better communication, planning, and flight deck procedures developed by the FAA, the number of these dangerous incursions can be dramatically reduced. Reducing risk on the runway is a shared responsibility. Through better crew resource management, communication, planning, and flight deck procedures, we can reduce the frequency of runway incursions at airports around the world. For more information, I encourage you to visit the FAA website at www.faa.gov slash runway safety. You can also review the supplemental material found in the bonus section of this DVD. I wish you blue skies and safe landings.